Hello children, today we are going to do the next lesson, The Little Girl. This written, uh, story is written by Catherine Mansfield and she was a famous writer, a prominent New uh, Zealand modern story writer and poet. So we are going to enjoy the story by Catherine Mansfield. For the girl, he was a figure to be feared and avoided. Every morning before going to work, he came into her room and gave her a casual kiss to which she responded with goodbye father so in the first line the author doesn't say whom he is speaking uh, she is speaking about to the little girl he was a figure to be feared and avoided so we wonder who is this strict person who is this person whom she is so afraid of and now suddenly it's the end of the second line that we come to know that it's her own father and when she sees her father going away in the carriage as the carriage becomes fainter and fainter she is relieved now oh, at last she is gone so for some time i can enjoy myself without being afraid of my father so usually we feel sad when our parent goes away from uh, home whereas she is happy because she's so scared of her father when he is not there she can be her normal self Morning, so the, because it is expected of her she just uh, uh, there's just a casual kiss on the cheek and then he goes away so there is no affection between her and her parents so, and in the evening you know she will stand near the staircase and listen you know because she's so scared to come out she stands there and she hears this loud voice so when she hears this loud voice her fear increases now Actually, the father is behaving in a typical manner. He come, uh, says and he starts, because he's tired after all his work and also he will start uh, saying loudly, bring my tea into the drawing room. Hasn't the paper come yet? Mother, go and see if my paper is out there. Bring me my slippers. So, because he's tired, he wants to relax. He's calling everyone and, you know, uh, creating a kind of fuss there. But when she hears his loud voice, you hear, that is the spelling, uh, meaning of stutter. That is, say something with a lot of difficulty. And this picture, you can see how this boy has this problem. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Hey, hey, guys, what's, wasn't that a great show? Okay, it's just a sign of some, uh, maybe we are nervous or something. And she says she never stuttered with a, any uh, with other people. Uh, and actually, she had given it up. But now, only when she sees her father, otherwise she speaks very uh, fluently. When she sees her father, she becomes so nervous that she stutters. And she, because why? She, because she's trying so hard to say the words properly. What is the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? So father is asking, why are you looking so unhappy? Huh? A wretched means miserable, you know, pitiful. Mother, I wish you taught this child not to appear on the brink of suicide. So she seems as if she's on the brink of suicide. She's going to commit suicide. Here, Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. Okay, keep my teacup there. And when she looks at him, she's thinking, oh, such a loud voice. He's so big, his hands, his neck. And at that, because he's very tired, he will yawn. And when he yawns, his mouth looks so big. So she gets altogether scared. Oh my God, such a big mouth. When she thinks of himself, she thinks that he's like a giant. Okay. So brink means on the edge, the tip of here. You can see certain pictures and you can see their edges. So these are called their br uh, brinks. Okay. So he says, why do you always look as if you're going to commit suicide when you see me? You're looking so worried. But the girl is not able to understand her father. When she sees him, she gets scared. Okay. And one Sunday afternoon, grandmother sent her on every Sunday afternoon, actually, her grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice talk with her mother and father. So grandmother is doing this so that she'll become close to her parents. But when the little girl goes there, always the mother will be reading there and father, he'll be stretched out on the sofa and his handkerchief will be covering his face. His feet will be on the cushion and he'll be nicely sleeping and snoring. Snoring as you can see in the picture below, isn't it? That nice noise that comes when someone is sleeping peacefully. Then she'll sat on a, uh, sit on a stool and she'll watch him gravely till he wakes and then he stretches and he'll ask what is the time. And that time she's so scared, nothing comes from her mouth, she just keeps looking at him. Then he look at her and say, don't stare so Gisya, you look like a little brown owl. You're looking like an owl with big eyes because the owl also has big eyes. So you're also staring at me like that. One day when she was kept indoors with the cold, her grandmother told her that father's birthday was next week and suggested that she should make him a pin cushion for a gift 
out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk. So there was a nice uh, yellow silk cloth in the house. And her grandmother said, why don't you make a pin cushion for him? So what's a pin cushion? A pin cushion is a kind of cushion where you can keep your pins and needles while working so that you can get them easily. So the grandmother wanted her to become closer to her parent father and that's why she told her to make a pin cushion for her father. So the girl set out to do it. So armed with a double cotton, the girl stitched three sides. Now but then in the cushion needs something to be filled with. So what is the thing that I have to fill it with? That's the question. The grandmother was out in the garden and she wandered into mother's bedroom to look for scraps. So if grandmother had been inside the house, she would have taken something from grandmother. Because grandmother was not there, she went to her mother's room looking for scraps, something that's old, not necessary. And on the table, she saw many papers, are they very nice papers. So what she thought, okay, I'll use this. She gathered them, she tore them into tiny pieces and nicely stuffed her uh, pillowcase. And then she uh, sewed the fourth side also. That night, there was a hue and cry in the house. Hue and cry means a lot of noise people are like when somebody you know everyone is running about here rooms are searching uh, being searched servants are being questioned why father's great speech for the port authority had been lost he had prepared a speech with lot of difficulty the speech is lost finally mother came into kezia's room kezia I suppose you didn't see some papers on a table in our room you must not have seen it no there were some tables in our, uh, some papers there Kezia says, ah yes, I tore them up for my surprise. So innocently she says, yes, I saw them, I took it for my surprise. What? The mother is shocked. Come straight down to the dining room this instant. Come immediately. Okay. And she is now all together worried all the pain that she has taken is going to go into trouble. Okay. Being after all this, she's going to be in trouble. When she went there, her father is pacing to and fro with his hands behind his back. Well, he asked sharply to the girl. The a mother explained no poor thing. She didn't know. So she went and took the papers for her surprise. Father stopped and he stared at the child. Did he do that? The girl, because she's so scared, she says, no, she's, I worried. Okay, that's why she says, no. Father, mother gets very angry and tells mother, go up to your room and fetch down the damn thing. Bring that thing now. And see the child is put to bed this instant. Immediately put her to bed because she has been naughty. The, she is punished to go to her room. When she goes to her room, she lies down in her bed. And she is crying so much, crying too much to explain. She lay down in the shaded room, watching the evening light make a sad little pattern on the floor. So she is so sad and she is looking at the floor, the lights which are falling on the floor. She feels it's very sad. And then father came into the room with a ruler in his hand with a stick. I am going to beat you for this, he said. Oh no, no, she screamed hiding under the bedclothes. She is hiding there. He says, he pulls aside the bedclothes and says, sit up and hold out your hands. You must be taught once and all for not, uh, not, not to touch things though, that do not belong to you. But it was for your birthday. Down came the ruler on her link, little pink palm. So she said, I wanted to do it for your birthday. But he was not ready to listen. And he bit her. So now the fear that she has of her father has increased. After a lot of time, hours later, when grandmother had wrapped her in a shawl and she had rocked her slowly in her rocking chair, the child clung to her mother. And then she's asking, why did God make fathers? What did God make fathers for? She's so angry. Why is God doing such things? Then grandmother pacifies her. Here's a clean hanky, darling. Blow your nose. Go to sleep, pet. All this you will forget in the morning. I tried to explain to father, but he was too upset to listen tonight. Friday, I tried to tell the poor thing it's not her fault, but he was not ready to listen. You will forget it soon. Don't worry, grandmother said. But the child never forgot. Whenever she saw him next, what happened? A red color comes into her cheeks and she always puts her hands behind her back. Can you guess why she's putting her hands behind her back? Can anyone guess? Is it because of the beating that she got? And she always looks at the family which live next door. They have children. And whenever she looks through a gap in the fence, she can see them playing with their father. 
and you know the child will be on the shoulders the girls will be hanging on to his coat they'll be playing around and once she even saw that the boys while they were watering the plants they turned the hose on him and he became completely wet and he used to laugh and enjoy this so then she understood that all fathers are not the same there are good fathers also and suddenly one day what happened mother became ill she and grandmother had to go to the hospital the little girl is left alone in the house with the cook during the daytime it was okay she played she read she made herself busy but at night when alice was putting her to bed she became scared why is she scared what is she scared of oh, as it becomes night she says what if i have a nightmare i often have nightmares and granny takes me into her bed i can't stay in the dark it gets all whispery i can hear all kinds of sounds at night i cannot be alone alice said you just go to sleep child and don't you scream and wake up your poor pa your father poor thing will be sleeping don't disturb him you go to bed and sleep but again the whole night may came the butcher with a knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling a dreadful smile and she cannot move she can only stand still crying grandma grandma and she woke afraid and what she saw her father is standing near her bed with a candle in his hand what is the matter he said so she was happy to see her father a butcher a knife i want granny she started crying he blew out the candle he bent down took the child in his arms carried her along the passage to his big bedroom there was a newspaper on the bed so probably he was reading he put away the paper then carefully tucked up the child he lay down beside her half asleep still still with the butcher's smile all about her it seemed she crept close to him she you know snuggling up to him and holding tightly to his shirt at that time the dog did not matter she just lay still because she is not afraid anymore here rub feet against my legs and get them warm said father so he's you know when she gets warmth from her father she will be happy so he is making comforting her and she lies near her father tired out he slept before the little girl because he has been working from morning and when she sleeps near him you now she gets a funny feeling she feels oh father is not so big after all and poor thing he has no one to look after him he is hard, harder than grandmother always she cuddles her grandmother grandmother is very soft he is harder than her but it's nice and every day he had to work and was too tired to be a, a mr macdonald it is not his fault he has to work so much and she had torn up all his beautiful writing so it was her fault no what she had done was wrong she stirred suddenly and sighed so suddenly she is moving and making a sound thinking about all this what's the matter asked her father another dream what happened why are you moving are you having a dream oh said the little girl my heart's on my head is on your heart i can hear it going what a big heart you have got father dear so does it mean that the father's heart is beating very loudly or does it mean that she has understood her father's heart is big and he actually loves her but only thing is that he loves her in a different way he doesn't know or she shows it in a different way and in this way the little girl comes closer to her father isn't that a wonderful story we do have some exercises here which have been kept uh, just kept, uh, put on these slides do pause near these slides and uh, complete it in your textbooks so that you know the answers thank you keep them ready now you can go on to the uh, word document attached in your uh, classroom and